Here is the best definition of team-based learning I found. Team-based learning is an active learning and small group instructional strategy that provides students with opportunities to apply conceptual knowledge through a sequence of activities that includes individual work, teamwork, and immediate feedback. Here you see there are five reasons to use team-based learning. Team-based learning equips students with skills such as communication, critical thinking, innovation, teamwork, and leadership. These skills can be applied across disciplines. Team-based learning encourages interaction with instructors and peers. It encourages a safe learning space, and in other words, a learning community. As students are working in teams, they feel a sense of obligation to one another, an obligation to attend class and to come to class prepared and ready to contribute. Also critical thinking, team-based learning challenges students to apply their knowledge, analyze complex situations and work together to come up with creative solutions. Students who experience team-based learning in their courses tend to achieve higher marks and enjoy the learning. Here are the three phases of team-based learning. I'm going to walk you through the phases one by one. And as we go through the phases in a minute, you'll realize that this is an instructional strategy rather than a teaching technique. It has a, it has a flow and a structure. It takes a group of students and transforms them into a team. They're not only learning the content, but they're also learning from one another. Phase one is the preparation stage. In this stage, the instructor would create small permanent teams that remain consistent throughout the entire course. The teams should be diverse. And to help create the teams, an instructor could administer a background knowledge survey to students, not only to get them to know them a bit better, but also to create those teams. So for example, uh, in the courses for advanced manufacturing, diverse teams could mean that students are in different roles from different companies that manufacture different things. Also, the instructor would need to explain the team-based learning process to the class on the first day. Phase one has a readiness assurance component to it. The readiness assurance process ensures that students come to class with a foundational understanding of the content, which allows for more meaningful discussions and application activities. These are usually assigned readings. And to help with this, an instructor could create a reading guide for the students. Phase two. Phase two starts with the individual readiness assurance test. This is a multiple choice quiz completed alone. And this is shown on the page there in green. Then comes the team readiness assurance test. It's exactly the same test but now it is taken as a team. You can see that in blue. In this phase, the team gets immediate feedback and can have more than one attempt at the test. On the far right, you can see the appeals box there. So this is a appeal process. This is used when students feel they have answered a question correctly on the quiz and they want to appeal it. The appeal should be a clear statement of argument supported by evidence. So for example, for a manufacturing course, it could mean arguing that a certain machine could be used in manufacturing for a certain product. Or an appeal might be simply a poorly worded or vague question. Going up further, the chart there, the clarifying lecture, this is a whole class. The whole class, the instructor gives instruction or a lecture based on the team's score. He's customizing the lecture and focusing on the topics that are not clear. Phase three starts with the team application activities. These activities are real world problems. In manufacturing, it could mean case studies or data analysis or simply working on the capstone project that the class has. 
It gives the students an opportunity to apply their critical thinking skills and to learn from their peers. The activities are best designed when using the 4S framework, which I'll show you right now. The 4S framework are four elements that begin with S that need to be incorporated into the team application activities. Starting with number one there, significant problem. In this example, this is the manufacturing of a key tag. We are taking theoretical concepts that we've been discussing in class and de demonstrating how they can be practically applied to a real world situation. In our example on the screen, this is the automated manufacturing of a T key tag for the Capstan project. Point number two, all teams in the class are working on the same problem, the key tag. And point number three, specific choice, the groups individually need to make their specific choice. So either the choice is A, B, C, or D. And the question is, uh, what is the most suitable method for automating the manufacturing of plastic key tags and why? And lastly, all groups should report the choices simultaneously. There's no changing of minds as the presentations go, go on. This is so differences in conclusions can be explored uh, within the class. So some questions could be, how did you get to this conclusion? Or what were the steps you took? Hence, uh, through this approach, the emphasis is on thinking things through, not just memorizing the facts. Lastly, team-based learning incorporates regular peer evaluation, where students assess the contribution and performance of their team members. It encourages accountability and helps students to develop essential interpersonal skills. The peer evaluation is completed individually and confidentially. It could be a form team members fill out. So for example, it may just have two key questions on the form. For example, the thing I appreciate about this team member and maybe the feedback could be, keep up the good work. The other question might be the thing I would like to request from this team member. And it could be, you have great ideas, come to class more often, or your ideas are great, but you're coming across as a little bit negative. After, the students then send the evaluation to the instructor, who then consolidates the individual comments and then sends the feedback to each student individually. In conclusion, team-based learning is an instructional strategy, not just a teaching technique. If it's done correctly, Team-based learning takes learning in groups to the next level. They become efficient learning teams. And in my opinion, team-based learning is a great fit for most courses, and there's research to back this up. Lastly, team-based learning can be done in any classroom. Thank you for watching, and please contact me if you have any questions.